Those of you guys out there who have been following for a while would know I've been training Puma and Kobe, this is my dog Nash, for the past month or so. They're obviously puppies, about 19 weeks. Now, unfortunately, like their training's going great. Six days down, everything going great. But unfortunately, their prey drive is getting to a level I've never seen in puppies. You can see that bird that come down there. Anything that, so around like this, they are fine. But if there's a toy involved and a ball thrown and a dog running, I'll show you on future videos. These dogs look at a dog like Nash, like his prey. They don't even look to the toy. They don't know how to interact. I've been socializing them consistently with new dogs at the beach, at the park. And uh, it's a tough one. They just don't seem to get it. Doing everything right that I'm always telling you guys to do. These dogs get socialized, socialized, socialized. And no matter how many dogs they meet, and how many dogs correct them? I bring them here for the reason that I want dogs to come in and they get corrected by another dog, which is the best way to do it because a dog will time it better than you. They'll give them a correction, been working perfect. They'll grumble or growl, the puppy gets up. But guess what? They go straight back to it. So these are tough ones. Now, what I'm trying to do, I'm gonna do a lot of lead work. We wanna do what we, I always talk to you guys about is marking the behavior, correcting the behavior, whatever term you use, at the time they do it. So long lead work good for this work and attach them to the lead. They almost feel like they're free. They go to, to that prey drive and I can correct them and reinforce that lever. It's going to come down to getting a lever that is the best lever you've ever seen. Um, they will be getting this x in time to come. But in the meantime, we're working very hard. So I can hopefully I can show you some footage of that prey drive you're talking about. I'm talking about. So you'll get to see what I'm talking about where I've never seen it in puppies like this, where they will... They don't, I, I know I've said it, but it's it's really interesting to watch. I find the psychology of it and the, the behavior of them very interesting. I do believe it's because they're sort of a pack, they're siblings and they're encouraging each other. I don't know whether it would be as bad if they were individual dogs. I don't think it would be, but they definitely encourage each other. Kobe, the bigger one, is getting slightly better, but still doing it and they chase, they try and bite them everywhere they can. And as a puppy, look, we'll get away with it. You know, you think it's all no big deal, but when these are big German Shepherds full grown, we're gonna have issues. So stay tuned and I'll hopefully get some footage showing you what I mean by this prey drive. And so you might see it in your own dogs and know how to correct it. And we'll work hard on getting these young puppies under control and not seeing other dogs as, uh, as food. <laughs> That's pretty much how they look at them. If you, you could superimpose a wolf's head onto them, you would think it's a wolf chasing its prey. It is very interesting to watch and uh, hopefully we can get it sorted out. So we have a new dog here now and I'm gonna bring the ball into play and we'll see if this prey drive kicks in if the, or if they listen. Hey buddy, what's this? Hey, what's this? Oh, hey, yes, what's this? Get it. Hey, see that? As Soon as there's a ball thrown, they see any other animal as prey. Good boy though, you stopped, good boy. Kobe, leave it. Be nice, good boy. Good boys. <coughs> ah, no. Play, bud. Go and play. No need to be aggressive. No need to bark. Just go and play. Good boys. So some people will say I'm crazy sort of setting it off. But the thing is, if you don't recreate the scenario, it'll happen when you're not ready for it. So I need to recreate it now correct and mark the behavior. So we are in a social environment where I'm not ready. They know not to do it. Look at these dogs. <laughs> okay, you ready, boys? Okay, you ready? Let's go. Let's see how we go. Oh. And that one's no big deal. They're just fighting over the ball. Hey, still a lot better than what he was. You see the hackles come up? Kobe, be nice. So I just want to jump in here with some audio to explain what you're about to see. It's the behavior I'm talking about with this prey drive. And you can see when you watch these puppies, if you know what you're looking at, they never really get it when it comes to play. They just stand and stare. They're very uh, standoffish. They run with other dogs. There's a bit of a go there. And you'll see a slow-mo coming up in a second where Kobe goes in for a really big bite on this dog. It's coming up right now. And here it is. Bang, big bite there. Now... As a puppy, okay, no damage is done. Obviously, I give a big correction there. But if that was an older dog, there's damage and there's a fight. So my job as a uh, trainer and your job as an owner is to watch your dogs at dog parks and use this opportunity to correct behavior that doesn't get corrected by other dogs because that dog didn't turn it, didn't do anything. 
You may think, well, it must have been okay. No, that dog just didn't want to do anything about it, probably didn't want to get involved, so it took me to get involved. If you miss these opportunities, they can compound, and that's what creates dogs being problems when they get older. But if I am onto this all the time, every time they do it, and this is why I spent an hour just watching these dogs, and every time they did it, I jumped on them. And they got better, but in this session, they never actually played. They always just ran after dogs, never... I have never seen, or I've seen them do one play bell. Apart from that, nothing. These dogs don't look to play, and we have to work hard with them. And uh, hopefully they'll learn it through myself, uh, the owner, and other dogs teaching them. And here we have a bit of a sort of standoff, and have another go again. I give another correction. But they do earn their freedom. I call it earning their freedom. They've got to earn it. Um, after I've given enough corrections and they calm down, they do get time off the lead. So it's just going to take a lot of repetitions of this. A lot of continuous training. So if you have a dog like this, don't ignore this behavior and put it down to cute puppy behavior. That happens when they're rolling on their backs and they're all interacting with each other. But if your dog's not looking to play bow, put its chest to the ground or, you know, roll and play with other dogs, it's not just play. Don't confuse dominance and prey drive with a dog playing because you could, you know, end up with a dog that's going to give you trouble as they age. So correct this behavior. Watch your dogs. You'll see here in a second... I even say to them in this moment, look at them. They just stand off and they don't interact. I never told them to sit or stay. They're just like they're on guard. I actually say that in the video. So the goal with these guys is to get them playing, interacting and having more fun. And with continuous reps of this, hopefully we're going to get there. So watch your dogs. Hopefully this video helps you out and you learn something from it in body language and watching your own dog, correcting behavior, praising good behavior and marking, which means sort of correcting behavior you don't like at the exact time that you see it, and then uh, work towards developing a well-balanced dog and get them playing, having a good time at your dog park to your beaches. Good boys. Good boys. Yeah. Jesus. Joyce. Dogs everywhere. Go. Get it. Get it. Best thing ever, these big dogs. Another dog just come in. A bunch of dogs now, and they've been pretty good. A lot of dogs here. Good boys. So there you have it, a visit to the dog park with all the, all the puppies. There's a bunch of dogs here today. So it was good because they got corrected by a few dogs. You saw a couple of incidents there. It wasn't as bad as it normally is because they had the bigger dogs to correct them. So they got calmer in the end, but every time a new dog come in, they went back and thought, this is a new dog, I'm gonna challenge this one. So the more of these visits, the better they're gonna get. So if it's your own dog, this is what you gotta do. You gotta bring it to dog parks or beaches, you gotta watch it. A dog park's good because it's a confined area so I can get onto them. If they behave, I catch them, put them in a down, lay them on the ground, whatever I need, correct their behavior and then let them go. And just teach them, every time you do it, I'm gonna be on your case. And that's what you have to do with your own dog. Uh, these dogs certainly have a very strong prey drive that we have to correct. And we'll get there with a lot of consi consistent training. But remember yourself, if you want to fix a problem, you've got to do this all the time. All the time. Bring them to the park. Bring them to the beach. And just watch them and work through it and work through it. Praise them for good behavior and jump on them for behavior that you don't want.